Two wins out of two for Dragan Skocic and Timo Meli, the national team of Iran. For today's edition, we'll be recapping Iran's victory over Bosnia-Herzegovina. You know what time it is? It's time for Timo Meli Talk. Hey everyone, glad you're back for some more Timo Meli Talk. We got plenty to talk about. Like we said, a 2-0 victory for Iran over Bosnia-Herzegovina in Sarajevo. Those goals scored by Kave Rezaei in the 46th minute and by Mehdi Egaidi in the 91st minute. And joining us today, great to have you guys back. First, Pasha Garami. How's it going, Pasha? It's a pleasure to be with you, Art, and Chioras, John. Good to see both of you. All right, of course, definitely a lot of positive energy. I mean, we got to be positive after a victory for Iran. And Kiarash, glad you could join us again. How's it going? Hey, man, I'm doing fine. Thank you for having me on this podcast again. I'm uh, glad to contribute together with uh, Pasha today. And when talking about this 2-0 victory for Iran over Bosnia, a main topic of discussion right now is the formation that was used by Dragan Skocic in the win over Bosnia. So let's be clear about something. On defense, Iran was lined up in a 5-4-1 with three center backs. And of course, on attack, it turned into a 3-4-3. Now, when taking a look at our um, traffic on Twitter, we had a survey and let's take a look at the results. The question was, did you like Skocic's use of three center backs against Bosnia? 38% said yes, 17% said no, but 46% said not sure. So definitely a lot of uncertainty involving this formation. So I'm going to start with you, Pasha. And you know, what is your take on this? You know, did you like the youth? Did you like Skocic using three center backs against Bosnia in the 2 nothing victory? So, Art, you know, the uncertainty is understandable. You know, this is the first time in a while we've seen Iran line up this way. But I'd like to put focus onto the shape of the team. Once we saw that Iran actually had shape, I think that reassured some of the uh, folks at home who were unsure about the, uh, the formation. We had shape. We did well. It's a fluid formation, 5-4-1 defensively, and as you mentioned, 3-4-3 three, three in offense. So I think that's the best of both worlds in some respects. Okay, now Kiarash, your turn. What is your take on Dragan Skocic using three center backs in the win against Bosnia? Well, I was uh, surprised when Skokic announced uh, this lineup because uh, it looked like a very experimental uh, one. But I generally agree with Pasha that uh, it has best of both worlds, namely that uh, in defense we look quite solid. Uh, the Bosnians didn't pose any real threats to our defense. And in uh, attack, we were smooth in transitions and we had several good counter-attacking moments. So overall, I'm satisfied with the way that uh, our team took shape using these two kinds of formation. Okay, now you just mentioned satisfied with the formation that Dragan Skocic used. I'm going to go ahead and say yes, that you probably obviously were satisfied with um, Iran's performance against Bosnia. Now, Pasha, how about you? I mean, what is, what's your answer to this question? I mean, were you satisfied with how Iran played against Bosnia? I was satisfied with how we played against Bosnia, but I was underwhelmed by Bosnia. I thought the Uzbeks actually provided better opposition for us uh, in some respects. But uh, Bosnia is a European team. It's good to play against teams of that caliber, um, supposed caliber. I guess Bosnia didn't play their best, but still. Um, yeah, I was satisfied. I thought we played very well offensively. We were, we were fluid and, you know, there were some mistakes. The pitch wasn't the best. Either, you know, I saw a lot of sliding, you know, the ball was jumping up a tad. So, you know, um, with all of that taken into, into consideration, I thought we played quite well. Okay, and with that, <clears throat> being happy about the performance that Iran had against Bosnia, we got to go into the man of the match discussion. I'm going to stay with you on this one, Pasha. So who was your man of the match in Iran's win over Bosnia? Well, you know, there are quite a few good players. Um, my man of the match, though, has to be Shoja Khalilzadeh. I thought that he was quite impressive. You know, he gets a lot of heat um, for, you know, uh, having stayed in Iran or his relationship with Carlos Queiroz being somewhat tumultuous, but he played well. Uh, even the ESPN commentator was uh, mentioning him uh, quite a few times, saying how brave he was. And obviously, Shoja means brave in Farsi, so he was, uh, he was doing quite well. I was happy with him. You know, I must say, I'm a little surprised by who you chose as your man of the match. But when I look back at it, 
In the beginning, Shoja started off a little shaky. I wasn't impressed with him with one of his giveaways that led to a goal-scoring opportunity for Bosnia. But after that... You know, like we say, it's not how you start, it's how you finish. And after that, he was solid the rest of the way. He was pushing up at the, at the right times. You know, he was, he was doing all things he needed to do as a physical center back. And that's what I liked from him. But from my point of view, my man of the match, I got I to go with Kave Rezaei because, you know, he scored the game-winning goal. I like that shot he took. It was a really beautiful shot with his left foot. And to me, you know, Kave is just a very calm and collected striker. And, you know, that's what we want to see from our strikers, you know, playing for Team Meli. You know, but having said that, now, Kiaras, your turn. Who was your man of the match in the victory over Bosnia? Well, uh, the man of the match for me was Abed Soda. Uh, although he was well covered by uh, center backs, uh, he still did stood out in a way uh, that he really had confidence when he had the ball. And his uh, ball distribution were uh, phenomenal, in my opinion. Uh, so I think that Skokic is going to have a hard time choosing between uh, Abizoda and Bayon Rand in the upcoming qualifiers. Because um, Abizoda has been playing consistently for Maritimo, having very good games, while Bayon Rand hasn't gotten any playing mid minutes at unfair yet. So uh, that's going to be a very tough decision. And uh, I'm curious what Skokic will do. All right, from one thing to another, we know, of course, with the man of the match, you know, this is a, you know, these are players that we are very, um, very impressed with, obviously. But now we got to go to a little bit of the negative, and that is, which player were you not particularly impressed with? And Kiarash, I'm going to stick with you on this one, so go ahead. Well, to uh, come back on your earlier statement about Khalil Rizari, mine's is a bit more contradicting because... I must admit that uh, Rezaei has scored a beautiful goal out of uh, nowhere. Uh, but overall, I wasn't impressed with his uh, ability to hold the ball uh, whenever we were in attack. Uh, I noticed that he often lost possession and uh, he wasted some uh, good opportunities to score earlier in the first half. Uh, I think this game made it a bit more obvious why he uh, didn't succeed at a competitive team like Club Brugge. Uh, but uh, considering everything, I do think that he's still a solid backup option in the squad if Taramir and Asmund aren't available. And as we know, Kiarash, being from you know Den Haag in the Nether in Netherlands, I mean he definitely knows his football in those areas. And you know, really impressed to hear you mention you know why it was tougher Kave Rezaï to break into Club Brugge. But having said that, now it's your turn, Pasha. I mean, which player were you not particularly impressed with? in the 2 nothing win over Bosnia? So again, I think this might be an easy choice. Um, I don't want to sound like a hard Sefi basher, but again, he didn't play that well enough. You know, I think moving forward, especially seeing the second half and as soon as Eze Tolai came in, I think uh, a guy like Eze Tolai is going to replace Hoy Sefi relatively soon uh, in the center of the park. I was impressed with Nur Lahi. I think Eze Tolai and Nur Lahi can be a very good partnership. But uh, again, Hoy Sefi was... Uh, kind of rash with his passes. Um, the pitch wasn't the best, but, you know, still, Hoysafi should be doing better for the amount of caps he has for the national team. And, you know, from my point of view, there was more than one player that I was unimpressed with. But first, I want to start with Hossein Kanani Zadegan. I mean, to me, he's a good, pure, physical center back. I like what he brings to the team in terms of, you know, just being, the, being that presence, and, you know, heading the balls out and, you know, being physical. But I'm not impressed at all with his vision and his ball distribution skills. And of course, got to go back to Esana Hatsafi. And I know, you know, whoever tunes into this, and of course, thank you to our supporters for always, thank you for the support, really do appreciate it. And that is, whoever is watching us, they're always going to say, man, what is your problem with Esana Hatsafi? But I have no choice but to keep on saying these things because I was not impressed with him once again. And a big problem with Esana Hatsafi is that he's ball watching. And we don't need this from our defensive midfielders or you know, our central midfielders, we don't need that, period. So having said that, let's transition a bit. Coming back to that formation in question. So moving forward, and this one's on the go to you, Kiarash. So moving forward, I mean, are you confident with Dragon Skocic using this three center back formation? You know, whether it's like we said, five four one in defense, you know, three four three in attack. You know, what is your take on this? Well, against uh, strong European sides, uh, I think it's wise for Skocic to use a uh, three center backs formation. Uh, because it provides more defensive stability against relative stronger sides. But uh, unfortunately, we don't play uh, many European teams. 
So uh, I think against Asian team, teams, he can uh, use a more offensive formation where he uses our real strengths. And that's the offensive players we have. Asmoon, Toremi, Jahanbash, Holi Zelda. Let's also not forget Hodos. So uh, I think uh, he can make a choice between uh, what opponent and adapt his formation to that. All right. I really like hearing what you said there. And I remember... Nearly a year ago, I interviewed Goran Tomic, who I went to, at that time was um, head coach of NK Lokomotiva. That's when um, Sadek Muharami was playing with Lokomotiva on loan from Dinamo Zagreb. And when I asked him, you know, wh wh how he liked utilizing Sadek Muharami, he did mention using, you know, the three center backs and having Sadek Muharami as a fullback. So I can't be surprised that Dragan Skocic did what he did. I mean, look at it, right? I mean, Skocic is Croatian, so is Goran Tomic. So... Having said that, though, I like what you had to add in. I like your example that you used, Kiarash. And now, of course, this question going right to you, Pasha. I mean, are you the, do you want to see Iran using this kind of formation moving forward, you know, the three center backs? Right. Well, you know, I think the biggest criticism of the Wilmots era was the lack of structure in the middle of the park. One thing that we saw a couple days ago against Bosnia was that there was structure. Finally, there was structure to the, uh, to the middle of the, the pitch. And uh, I think we can attribute that to the formation. So Kiarash mentioned against stronger opponents. Yes, it's understandable. Let's do the 5-4-1 and that's, it's organic. You know, it offensively can turn into a 3-4-3 as we previously mentioned. Um, but against Asian opposition, uh, which those are the teams we typically play against, I think we can revert to a more traditional four at the back, something more offensive to utilize our offensive firepower. Um, overall, I think, the 5 4 1 formation is something we can also use against teams like South Korea and Japan, too, if we do have to face them. Um, I thought it was solid, and let's move on with this formation. All right, we are getting closer to wrapping up this edition of TMLE Talk, but of course, now I'm going to share some more stats with everyone, and that is, you know, when looking at the final stats of the match, you know, Bosnia, you know, controlled more possession against Iran, and they also completed more passes. So, when seeing this stat, I'm going to go with you on this, Kiarash. When seeing this stat, is this something that brings a little bit of concern to you? Uh, no, not at all, because uh, I don't give much meaning to ball possession. Because uh, in football, just like we have seen uh, under Carlos Queiroz, it's about capitalizing on your chances. And we did that by uh, winning 2-0. to zero. So uh, personally, I prefer the result uh, over the notion of ball possession. All right, Pasha. Your turn. What's your take on those stats I just shared? I agree with Kilrash. You know, possession is just a number. Um, amount of passes made is just a number. You know, we capitalize on our chances. We were lethal. Bosnia weren't. And uh, going forward, I don't think it really matters. We don't need to take that too much into consideration anymore. All right. Well, definitely like the input here. And there's something else I can add is that looking back at this win, I mean, we've, you know, we've talked a lot about you know, we mentioned Kave Rezaei. We talked about the players we were impressed with, of course. We know Abed Zadeh was great. And, you know, you, you mentioned Shoja Khalil Zadeh. And you know, let's not forget Mehdi Gaidi, you know, coming on as a substitute, scoring his first goal ever for TMLE. And you got to love that beautiful pass he received from Saide Ezatolahi. I mean, I remember talking to other Iranian football fans in the past saying, some of them, they were saying that Mehdi Gaidi was not Tio Meli material. Well, you know what? You know something? He is Tio Meli material now. We just saw that goal. Beautiful finish against Bosnia. Now, we're just about ready to wrap this up. And, you know, for me, the one thing I could finish on, of course, I'd like for you all to elaborate on as well, is that, you know, a 2 nothing win, you know, we're happy with it. We all know, we know that phrase, winning cures everything. But I'm also wanting to say that the 2 nothing win over Bosnia has not fully solved any kinds of problems, has not fully solved the problems we have at the central midfield or defensive midfield position. And I'm saying that, as, you know, I'm saying that because, you know, Saida is a he has been out for a while, but now that he's back, I feel like we are on the right track. So what do you got to say about that, Pasha? You know, it's understandable. It takes time. You know, this is only the second game Skocic has had with Iran. And um, the first game was underwhelming. We got the result. Uh, this game was much more promising and we got the result. Uh, so. A lot of good things going forward. I think Hoyt Safi is going to get phased out uh, soon. And, you know, I, I said in the last uh, show that Iran would win this game if we 
we're assertive. And from the get-go, we were assertive. So if we continue this mentality, there's no doubt that we can push forward and uh, do well. All right, of course. I'm about to get to you on this, Kiarash. I just have to make this clear. You know, Pasha, I love your mindset. I love the way you're talking, saying that you, you predicted a victory. Yes, you're right. You got it. And I look back at my prediction. I said a 1-1 one, one draw. You know, why was I thinking that? You know, let's just move past that. But like I said, my question to you, Kiarash, remember I mentioned how Iran got this 2-0 win, but I felt that, you know, that didn't solve the problem at central midfield. But, you know, so what is your take on what I had to say? Well, uh, it takes time, just like Pasha said, and uh, therefore I think uh, there should be more friendly games in order to uh, solve these uh, issues we have on the central and defensive midfield uh, areas. But if you compare it to the Uzbek game, there has already been uh, some progress. So I'm seeing upward uh, sloping uh, progress. I hope that it continues. All right, guys. Well, I just want to say thank you for taking the time to join me again on TMLA Talk. Always a pleasure to have you on the show. Kiarash, it's great to have you. Uh, thank you a lot, Arash John and Pasha. I enjoyed being on TMLA Talk. Always a pleasure, Kiarash. And Pasha, once again, thank you for taking the time to provide your analysis on TMLA Talk. Arjun, right, John, I appreciate it. Thank you, Kiarash, again. Um, I look forward to speaking with you guys in the future. And that's it for this edition of TMLA Talk. Of course, very satisfied, happy with a 2-0 win over Bosnia. And a personal thank you, I'd like to send out to Dragan Skocic. Thank you for not inviting Masude Shojai. And with that, you know what to do. Get to our website, www.teamlatalk.com. You know where to find us on social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. You know the handle, at Team LA Talk. Don't forget to like, comment, share, subscribe. Hit that notification button. See you on the next edition of Team LA Talk.